think we're going to go. Um, did you know, I, I scared myself this week, that it takes 62 casseroles to feed your little meals. 62 a week. That's some food, and that's some people being blessed. And um, they just love the home cooking. They um, Yesterday we presented an eggplant dish, and I'm not sure who cooked it, but oh, they are coming back and saying, more of that, more of that. And uh, they just love homemade cooking. Now, um, 62 dishes a week is quite a feat to do. And if you think, hey, I can help out, I can make a, a dish for my family and one for the Lord, then please see me afterwards. We can supply trays. We can supply um, um, casserole dishes if need be. Whatever makes it easy for you. And we also supply lovely fruit and veggies. And uh, so, um, yeah, we need your help. If you could help out with making a casserole. Now, how do you get it here? Well, um, make it so you can freeze it, put it in your freezer, and then bring it here Saturday morning or during the week and put it in the freezer over what we call the signal freezer over in the storeroom. If you've got a key to the church, you've got a key to that storeroom. And, um, or text me, let me know, and we can make plans from there. I'm really struggling here. There's some sort of weight that's just keeping on pulling this um, microphone from the event. I'm not sure what the go is, but. I'll keep at it and see how, how we go. We're doing a series on the Old Testament um, miracles. And um, we're doing it um, through, the, through the Bible and looking at some of the amazing things. Two weeks ago I preached on Aaron's rod that budded. And um, today we're looking at the miracle of the manna that uh, fell from heaven. And so it's Exodus chapter 16. Turn there, we'll read the passage and base our sermon from, from there. Exodus chapter 16, the miracle of the manna. We've, uh, we know the story well. Let's remind ourselves of it. And I just think there might be more in the story than just the Sabbath. Let's have a look. Exodus chapter 16. And um, it's a long chapter. Um, I could have started at verse 5, uh, sorry, 2, but we won't. Let's head into verse 16. Verse 16, I'm pretty sure you can pick up most of the story from there. So whether your, your Bible is uh, like mine, or whether it's in your phone, or iPad, or a device, let's get it open and read God's Word together. There's nothing like sharing God's Word as God's church together. When the layer of dew evaporated, there were fine flakes on the desert surface, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they asked one another, What is it? Because they didn't know what it was. Moses told them, It is bread from the Lord. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each person needs to eat. You may take two quarts per individual according to the number of people each of you has in his tent. So the Israelites did this. Some gathered a lot more. Uh, sorry, some gathered a lot, some gathered a little. When they measured it by quarts, the person who gathered a lot had no surplus. The person who gathered a little had no shortage. Each gathered as much as he needed to eat. Moses said to them, No one is to let any of it remain until morning. But they didn't listen to Moses, and some of them left it till morning, and it bred worms and stank. Therefore Moses was angry with them. They gathered it every morning. Each gathered as much as he needed to eat, and the sun grew hot and it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, four quarts apiece, and all the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He told them, this is what the Lord has said, tomorrow is a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. 
Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Set aside everything left over to uh, be kept until morning. So they set aside until morning as Moses commanded and it didn't stink or have maggots in it. Either today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you won't find any of it in the field. For six days you will gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Yet on the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they did not find any. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and instructions? Understand that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he will give you two days' worth of bread. Each of you are to stay where you are. No one is to leave his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel named the substance manna. It resembled coriander seed and was white and tasted like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Two quarts of it are to be preserved preserve for your generations, so they may see the bread I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Moses told Aaron, take a container and put two quarts of the manna in it. Then place it before the Lord to be preserved throughout your generations. As the Lord commands Moses, Aaron placed it before the testimony to be preserved. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years until they came to the inhabited land. They ate manna until they reached the border of the land of Canaan. They used a measure called an omer, which held about two quarts. Long reading, but there's a story, there's a lot there. And there's at least three sermons uh, in that passage. And so I'm going to go briefly over it, looking at one aspect that, uh, that I can see from here. My, if you want to go to sleep, my big idea is this. God always meets my need. God always meets my need. Have you ever wondered how on earth you're going to make it through something that you do? I do it all the time. You hit things and, and you, you wonder, how are you going to get there? And um, I'm sure I'm speaking to someone today who might be going through a wilderness themselves. How am I going to make it? How am I going to get there? But your life tells the story that the Lord is your provider. This week I had to get a brochure out. And um, I had to get in a hurry. I had to have it done before the, the 4th of um, May because I'm meeting one of the parliamentarians. I need to present it to them. And um, I, uh, I went to a printer's and um, I, had, uh, I got a quote. And I went back to my friends who were working on it with me. And they said, yeah, we can cover that, no worries at all. And, uh, but that's as far as, as we can go. I battled and battled to get the graphics, the, um, the logos I needed and that because the guy who had them cracked the nasties and sharp shot and would not give them to us. And I'm thinking, oh no, here we go, here goes a brochure and here goes any thoughts of looking okay for the parliamentarian. And um, I prayed, I said, God, you've got to get me through this somehow. And I actually brooded on it all last weekend. I went on Friday, and then so all last weekend, I thought, how is this going to happen? I worried, I worried, I thought, I've got no money for this type of thing, this type of work. How can we do it? And um, I went to the printers on um, Monday, and um, a different lady was there at the desk, and she said, I'll pull it up for you. She had pulled it up. I looked across at all the list of um, business cards there and I saw her name there as the director of the printing company. I thought, oh, this is going to be good. And um, 
She worked on it. I gave her the photos that I'd had. I'd met with uh, the people involved and got permission for all the photos. That was all okay. It was the graphics that was going to cut the, the worry. I said, how much is the graphics going to cost me? She said, 500 and something dollars. I nearly died. I thought, I can't. And I just said, well, I'm embarrassed. I thought, what am I doing? And she said, that book. And I bought a book that explained what we do. And uh, it's a little white book. She said, give me a look at that for a minute. She said, when are you coming in the day? I think you're the same man. I heard you talking about the, the work you do. She flipped through. She said, my company would love to sponsor all the graphics for you for free. Put my logo at the bottom of the page, but we'll pay for the whole lot of, of the graphics. I pick up the brochure on Monday morning. It's coming Monday morning. We worry, don't we? We worry, but God has a way of getting us through. So no matter, no matter what you're going through in your personal life, whatever your wilderness is, the story of the manna says that God provides. You hear the promises in Scripture all the time, don't you? Um, we even hear, and yet, you know, you hear some of the scenes in the church, loving your replying, oh my God shall supply all your need according to his, you know, verses. And even the shepherd psalm, now I'm with you in the green pastures and that. But still doubts come into your mind, doesn't that? Can it work for me? Is he going to be there for me? How am I going to face this 500 and something dollar graphics cost? I haven't got that money. My Lord shall supply it where you need. And we need to trust him. God, to me, God meets us in that place where our hands are on our heads. How is God going to get you through this $500 graphics cost? That's where God meets you. That's where God meets me. And that's exactly where God met the children of Israel. I didn't tell it to you there, but we're hungry. We want to go back to Egypt. We're so desperate. We'd rather eat the cucumbers than the garlic in Egypt. It's better than what we've got out here in this desert. And God met them right there in their complaining. Right there in the spot, there in the desert, he met them with this manner. Notice, they're whinging, they're complaining. God did not meet them in judgment. He met them with heavenly food. Isn't that beautiful? God didn't meet them with judgment. He didn't whip them and get after them. He met them with heavenly food. And that's how he treats us. Now, um, this stuff's coming down. And they're saying, what is it? And they called it Mam Hu. Which simply means, what is it? That's what they call manna. Manna means, what is it? God still feeds us manna from heaven today to help us along our way. And we still ask, what is it? What is it? I've got three points for you here. One is, manna is a mystery. What is it? It's a mystery to them. It was a mystery. It's unusual. But it was, according to our reading, sweet, refreshing, but it was to be consumed. Some feel that we need to know all the answers in the Bible before we can commit to Jesus. Some feel we need to know all the answers in the Bible before we can be baptised. Or, here's another angle of it. Some people feel we need to know all the answers to everything in the Bible, then they knowingly feel it's their duty to make you know all the things that are in the Bible. And that's not a very happy person to be around. 
Yet the mystery of life goes far beyond how many angels can fit on a pinhead. The manna from heaven was a mystery. It came down <coughs> and it went by its name literally. Here's my point. God's love is greater than our ability to understand it. When God brings you answers to your prayers, your life, your wilderness experience, know that God is already there with you. He meets you in the wilderness. He meets you there. And God's love is greater than yours and my ability to ever understand it. Sometimes we just have to stand back in awe and give the Lord all the praise for what he does for us. And you know, David and their worship leader, I don't think we do that enough. I don't think we stand back as a church in awe and say, thank you God for all you do for me. Together God wants to hear our praise as his church. Because we all are living miracles. So one, it's a mystery. My goodness, what have I done? <laughs> it's a mystery. Second, <laughs> Patty Jones is one of my best friends. She's also a counsellor at our local council. And so as I stand here, I'm not sure something's wrong or something's right. I'm going to keep preaching. <laughs> Manna is a mystery. Second, manna is miraculous. Manna is miraculous. Not just a mystery, it was a miracle that God should feed his people by raining down white stuff from heaven out of this world to this world for 40 years. Some say it was just an earthly phenomenon. If you look at James and Force of Brown, one of the commentators, he says that um, there was a tree that grew white gum and that uh, they ate that. That was a manna. Well, you just think with me. Um, well, three or four million people around here. There were three or four million people um, going through the desert. If they were all to have these white trees down, it'd be a desert rock, well, truly. And I'm not sure how that could be a miracle. It came from heaven. They asked, what is it? Because it came from heaven. It was a miracle. Manna was God breaking into human existence and sending his salvation right when the children of Israel needed it. Manna was God breaking into human existence and sending his salvation right when Israel needed it. And that is the message that you and I need to hear today. In our own journey, God is with us. God is right beside you and there is no sin that he cannot forgive because he broke through human existence at the cross. And there at the cross, my destiny was determined. Then and there, not as some future core experience. Jesus said he is the bread of life and he meant it. And maybe you and I need to know that manner this morning. The Lord is good. He sent down to you and I, his son Jesus Christ, the manner of life. The manner of life. And my chance to you is accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour today. Know the blessed assurance of your Lord and Saviour today. Know the assurance of salvation today because that's the manner of heaven that Jesus wants you and I to know about. Three. So we've got one. Manner is a mystery. Two. Manner is a um, miracle. And thirdly, manner is a memorial. We find in Exodus 16 there are instructions how to keep it. The Bible is filled with memorials. We've got the rainbow. And I just love it when I see a rainbow. And what do we all know when we see a rainbow? 
God's not going not gonna to flood the earth again. It's a promise. Another one we've got, another memorial, is the Passover, where we remember the salvation through the shedding of blood. Of course, we now have the what Jesus changed that night um, before his death, called communion. Same thing. We remember Jesus' shedding of blood and his giving of his body for you and I. It's a memorial of, of what he has done for you and I. Thirdly, we have the Sabbath. The Sabbath is an eternal memorial. If I had time to look up um, Deuteronomy, you would see that. Now, I haven't hit the Sabbath enough because usually this whole thing we teach our kids is about the Sabbath, and it is. It is. In Deuteronomy 5, verse 12 to 15, it says that we are to remember it as an eternal memorial. In which, now, why do I remember the Sabbath for, and why do I keep the Sabbath day on the seventh day for? We remember God's creative glory and his command for us to have one day in seven for worship and rest. All memorials, though, you look at the memorials, that the three I've just said, and all the memorials in the Old Testament point to Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, not some works of them. You see, the Sabbath is all about Jesus and resting in him. The Sabbath points us to a time we'll be in heaven with Jesus forever, resting with him. The power of this Sabbath was to reach generations struggling in the wilderness who needed to be reminded there was a God. If you're needing to read wrong mind, there's a God this morning. If you're in a wilderness of some sort, whatever wilderness that might be, and you need to be reminded there's a God. The Sabbath is a memorial to you. There is a God, and he's right beside you. Right beside you. He meets you in your wilderness. That's where he reigns and manner in the wilderness, and he wants to do the same for you and I today. When you boil it all down, the miracle of the manna, the mystery of the manna, the um, miracle of the manna, the memorial of the manna, it comes down to this. It comes down to remind you in your own life that God is faithful. God can be trusted. Forty years God was faithful and God has always been with Israel. All your life and my life, you look back and I guess have to talk to some of the more senior ones, you can say, yes, yes, along the journey of my life, I was scared in moments when I thought I was in the wilderness, but God was, God is, God always will be faithful. A few years ago, there was that on TV. It started like this. There's a woman sitting in a car. She's minding her own business. All of a sudden, from out of absolute nowhere, this man comes in and just grabs her and wrestles her out of her seat and whips her away. It looks like he's attacking her. When the camera pulls back, on the scene, you, you see revealed the car is on fire. And, um, and to our horror, we see that he has saved the woman and the woman didn't know it. The man takes the, to rescuing her and um, the ad then says, you need to see the bigger picture. Channel 9 News gives you the whole picture. Church this morning, the story of the manor says you need to see the bigger picture. God is faithful. God meets you at your needs. God is always faithful. He will always meet us at our needs. That's the bigger picture. 
to whatever is hitting you at the moment in your personal life, social life, home life, work life, church life. God is there. He's leading you. And he wants to come to you today wherever that need is and put his finger on it and meet it right now. My friend, I'm here to remind you today that you're not alone, whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you're doing. Exodus 16 says you're not alone. Exodus 16 says you don't journey alone. Exodus 16 says God is with you. God is sufficient for the journey. God will provide a way. God will meet all your needs. And that church is the greatest miracle we can ever have that jumps out of the Old Testament through the New Testament and into 2023. May you put your hand in his hand today and say, God, meet my need. Be my assurance. Be my answer. Be my faithful God. I need you this morning in a very real way to rescue me from the fires of the world around me.